All right, so Acts chapter 10, verse 23, we're just walking through the book of Acts, and we are still covering Peter's journeys, and he is currently with Cornelius, and it, we pick up the story of Cornelius in verse 23 from last week. So Cornelius, Cornelius, short for Cornelius is Neely, by the way, so I think that's a great name. He invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. So this is a good reminder not to worship the preacher, I think. Um, I try to remind Emily of that often. And uh, I tell her, you know I'm not perfect, right? Um, <laughs> sorry, I actually wrote that joke just to see if it would work. <laughs> I don't usually like to write them. They don't usually land. But uh, no, but preachers are not always right. That's the point I want to make. You know, I'm often asked, uh, does everyone have to agree with you to be at Christ Church? And the answer is, of course not. Of course not. I mean, obviously, you have to agree with the church on the big things, the statement of faith, for example. But I disagree with myself. Like, I'm, I've listened to some of my sermons from a few years back, and I'm like, oh, you know, I need to edit that. I need to go back and say that differently. I disagree with myself. And sometimes there's, there's interpretations of a particular text that I'm not certain, that no one is certain that there's three or four good takes and I, you know and you, you have to kind of pick one and give some evidence for it it's okay to disagree on the minor things amen the what you don't want to do is be uh stubborn because god uses the pastors and elders and your friends and your family and your parents he uses other people to preach the word to you this is a great example of it why doesn't god just send an angel to cornelius why doesn't god just talk to cornelius himself why does God need to go through all of this to send Peter to Cornelius? I don't exactly know, but God has ordained that people would be saved through the preaching of the gospel, the teaching of the word of God by other humans. And so you just have to be aware that that's the typical means that God tells you stuff, right? People have responded occasionally, well, um, I'm going to wait, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask the Lord for guidance and I'm going to see what he has to say. But they oftentimes don't realize that typically what he has to say, he says through other humans. So you have to be, you have to be open and uh, eager. Remember the Bereans, when it came to the preaching of the word of God, they were eager and ready to receive the word of God, right? And then what did they do? Then they, they checked it. That's right. There's a, and obviously, how long does it take to check? It can take a long time. You understand what I mean? It's not like the Bereans made him push pause on Paul every five seconds. Let me check that. Let me cross-reference that. Let me check that. No, they're, they're processing these massive truths over an extended period of time. And they're eager to listen and to learn, expecting God to do something. But then they're also checking the scriptures themselves. And that takes a long time. And that's, that's good. That's fine. Um, so I hope that helps um, help you understand. What you don't want to be is uh, suspicious or stubborn. But if there's something you don't understand or get, or you're just not sure, or disagree, just this is what uh, I heard once said by a preacher. Um, he said, just put it on the shelf and save it for later. That's totally fine. Don't just totally reject it. Be like, ah, oh, well, you know, let me just put that on the shelf. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. I don't quite know how to process that. Let me put it on the shelf and, and, and think about it and chew on it. Make sense? And uh, we all have to do that, obviously. We all have to do that from time to time. Amen. Let's move on to verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. Amen. So who got to church first? Huh? <laughs> Was it the janitor? Was it the, uh, was it the pastor? Who was there first? I think this is a good point. Are y'all scared to say it? The congregation was there first, 
And then after everyone was seated, then the pastor came in. So we're not going to do that here. But because <laughs> I like to get here early. But um, but what this shows us, though, is that they are they're very eager. They're eager. They're hungry for the word of God. They are waiting for God to send them someone uh, to preach the word to them. And I think that's a, a lesson we all have to learn. We need to be eager, anticipating, expecting for God when he speaks to us, especially in, in consecrated worship on the Lord's day. Amen. That, that we should, we don't want to be like the, uh, the hard packed ground that the seeds just sit on top and then the birds snatch them away. The birds of hunger pains, you know, crying baby, messed up sound system, right? You know, all those, those things that can just snatch the word out of your ears before it ever goes in and sinks down deep. So we want to be eager and ready, waiting, anticipating. So this is not a law that everyone has to be seated first, but the principle is that everyone should be ready and eager, like that God might meet them. Amen. I mean, just think about all you've done to get here. You've already had to get up the kids, get dressed, do your hair, all that stuff. You might as well finish strong and pay attention and wait on the Lord, right? It'd be a bummer to go through all of that just to sit in there like oblivious, you know, just in completely in attention deficit disorder and not catch anything or receive anything from the Lord. That'd be a bummer, right? So uh, get settled, get ready. This is also why this principle is why we have at the beginning of the service, why we've added a time of get your hearts ready to worship the Lord. You know how we, we play a little music and you can just settle because the last thing you want is for the, the call to worship to commence. Let us worship the Lord together and, and prayer. And the people are still over there, you know, chewing a donut down. All right. <laughs> You want to get, get ready and prepare for the Lord to, to meet us, right? Amen. All right, verse 28. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. We don't have any screens today, Kevin? Okay, well, that's all right. But God has shown me that that happened to be the one I looked to see. That was, what are the odds? But it's been working? Okay, good. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came with objection. I asked them, why you sent me for me? Right? So what are we, any principles that we can learn here? God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. I think that's very important that there can be no partiality in the church. Amen? No partiality among the rich or the poor, um, among the whoever, right? Among whatever race or gender or anything like that. Um, but, um, but we should treat everyone justly according to the law of God and, and render to everyone what is due to them according to the law of God <laughs> from the heart. Um, no snobbery, no jealousy, no partiality whatsoever. And Cornelius said, beginning in verse 30, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. <coughs> so, <coughs> what's Cornelius doing during the week? He's praying, that's right, he doesn't just pray on Sundays. He doesn't just meet God in corporate worship, although that is essential and central, um, but he, is, he has a, uh, a personal uh, relationship with with God as well throughout the week. It seems, it seems. Um, and and verse thirty one and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa, and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore we are all here in the presence of God, to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Isn't that cool? What a missionary opportunity. What an evangelistic opportunity to be sent to a house by a vision, and then everyone's there, seated. All right, tell us the gospel. <laughs> What's the good news? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be us, you know, putting it on a tee for somebody? And I hope you'd be, you'd be able to, to speak, wouldn't you? You'd be able to. The Lord would give you what to say, amen, right? He'd give you what to say. 
Um, but, uh, but notice how, what, the church is there, they're having church, and notice where is God? He's in there. He's with them. This is something that isn't, we talk about all the time, but you have to be consciously aware of the fact that in corporate worship, God is with us through the Spirit of God. He sent the Spirit of God into this world, and the Spirit of God teaches us and convicts us of sin and righteousness and just and judgment, and, and we are the temple of God as the gathered people of God. And so I think that's the most important thing when it comes to paying attention in worship, getting something from God out of worship, doing your part in worship, worshiping Him, is you have to be conscious in your mind that He is among you, that He is present, right? Um, what percentage of the message were they ready to hear? Verse 33, 100% of the message. You know, if God is going to meet you and God is going to speak to you, you, none of us, none of us have the right or the privilege to, you know, do a 60-40 with God. We have to be ready to hear 100% of what he has to say. Yes? All right. And, um, How were they prepared to respond to what Peter has to say? Verse 33. How are they going to respond? Notice he says, to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. That's right. They they are prepared. So whatever God has to say, they're ready. They're going to receive 100% of it. They're all ready. They're all present. They're all going to receive 100% of it. And they're going to all respond to it appropriately through obedience. I think that is a great model for us when it comes to corporate worship. Amen? Are you all with me? All right. Well, then let's talk about something. Uh, let me talk. For those of you who aren't with, with me, let's talk about something interesting here. Um, are you able, are you there, all there, ready to receive 100% with obedience, even when kids are crying near you? <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Cornelius didn't have a children's church, right? Um, did he? Did Cornelius have a children's church? Notice what it says. We are all here. There we are all here. There was no children's church to send the distracting little vipers and diapers somewhere else, Right? <laughs> Um, do you think there were perhaps some people in there that had weird quirks and breathed weird, right? Anybody spill, uh, uh, what's the, what's the giant metal cup that falls every Sunday, right? Somewhere in the room. It's like, we can do like a bingo card, you know, aisle six, four, right? it's like handbells. Uh, some of you don't know, y'all talk about the Stanley that hits the concrete every Sunday right? Or the fly that goes around and lands on my head, right? That's the worst. Uh, we ha- I think we have, to, uh, we have to grow up a bit. We have to really learn the, the, the self-discipline. Isn't it self-discipline? Isn't that what it is? It's self-control to be able to sit for an hour um, or stand and sit and sing and receive and be attentive. The sermons are usually 30 minutes long to be attentive to the sermon or even to the uh, communion exhortation, right? Or, or to whatever else might be taking place. Even honestly, I don't know about you, but I am perfectly capable of standing and singing a song with passion and zeal and not actually processing the words of that song in my mind. Are you able to do that too? It's odd, right? <laughs> It's odd. Um, I, you know, this brings up a weird thing. Why is it that we can remember a song in our mind? It, you, can you remember a song like you can sing a song in your mind? But it's weird that in our mind while we're singing it, we can actually sing the keys. Isn't that strange? That's just amazing. Like, I don't think AI can do that yet. I was, that's what I was thinking of at four in the morning when I couldn't sleep. I was, I'm singing a praise the Lord, all you need, but I'm in my mind and I can do the now. I was like, how is it that I can hear it in keys in my brain? It's weird. All right. But we are, we are, we have all that we need. That's a good segue. We have all that we need. We have the, the brain power to focus for 30 minutes and to focus on these words, but we have to gain a self-discipline and we have to, and self-control is a fruit of the spirit. So we should pray for the fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control. Amen? 
What, what we don't want to do is demand that our ADD, n- no offense, just for lack of, that's what it's called these days, attention deficit disorder, our inability to pay attention for longer than a, a scroll, a swipe, um, what we can't do is demand that everything change around that, right? We, we can't continue to get, uh, you know, lazier and lazier and dumber and dumber and dumber and expect the whole world to accommodate us. What would that particular, what would that be called? All right. <laughs> No, we, nor do we want to medicate ourselves. What? Yeah, idiocracy. That's a good one. I, I think there's a lot of words for it, but consumerism, I think, would be a good word for it. In consumerism, the customer is always right. The customer is always right. Um, in uh, the development of software where they are, and I'm not an expert on this, but having heard some things about this, in the development of software where the customer is king, and they want their software to be purchased, they program the AIs to be able to accommodate humans' dumbness. And the dumber it gets, the dumber the AI gets. That's why you can misspell things in the search bar, and it still gives you what you want. It's accommodating you. You understand what I mean? It, it, is, trying to, to, it is trying to meet you where you are. It's, you know, the buttons and the, the flashes and all of the, all of the things are user friendly. It's, it's part of our consumeristic culture. And, uh, but I think in a covenantal community, not an audience driven church or a consumeristic church, the goal is for us to get better with self-control. Make sense? And, uh, and I really think you can. Uh, if we were to exclude the children and put them, you know, out of the covenant worship service, <clears throat> out of the covenant renewal service and um, so that the adults could pay better attention. Do you think over the long term, long term, w- that the adults would be more attentive? No, it would not. And that is proven. Uh, you can go to any audience driven church that, ha- that has that the customer's king model and the children are whisked away into this wonderful playground, playground of bliss and the and you can look around that room, and I promise you, you will you will be struck by how little people are paying attention. Um, wait, what? The children, yes, or the adults. That's exactly right. Um, and it's not a it's not a surprise, honestly. The kids didn't grow up with an identity of being a part of the church, a part of the gathering. Plus, they didn't receive the uh, grace that comes to us through the preaching of the word of God, the sacraments the praise of his name, the rendering of tribute, all of those things that God gives us grace through faith, but he uses those particular means. They're called means of grace. And the, and the kids didn't have that, you know? It's a terrible, it's a terrible thing. Um, but anyway, that's not the point of my, of my lesson. My, the point of my lesson is we have to, uh, to, to discipline ourselves to, to be like Cornelius and his family, all there, um, ready and eager and 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 uh, ready to obey one hundred percent. Amen. This is not a this is not some weird legalistic rule. Sometimes, please don't do this. There are churches that take this, and I think legalistically, and the kid is screaming at the top of its lungs, and they don't go into the foyer. They're just like, no, we can't remove the kid from the presence of the Lord. We ha- he has to receive sacrament. Like, no, this it's not magic, right? <laughs> God is not impractical. Uh, if there's a kid telling the whole room to worship him, right? It's okay to remove him, discipline him. We're not here to worship you, you know, thus saith the paddle or whatever. Um, it's a good theological lesson. And then come back in, come back in. Don't, don't give them what they want and, you know, have, a, have some cookies, have a break, you know, have a little nap because then you might, you might pick up a pattern each week. Bring them right back in. So I know it's difficult. Is that difficult? Stressful? I've been there. Okay. I've been there. Um, but it, it gets better. I will say this, but we can learn to, uh, to discipline ourselves, even if there's crying, even if there's, uh, distractions of, of whatever sort, we need to learn to zero in our, our minds. And, and can your children learn that? Yeah, it takes time, takes practice, takes patience. You know, they're not robots. Um, 
But I promise you, sit them in front of Bluey, and you'll see how well they can pay attention for 30 minutes, okay? Right. Um, anybody anybody want to give some tips that has done it, has raised, I, I have some tips, but maybe some of you have found some successful things at helping your kids to pay close attention to the Word of God. And, and don't say coloring books because I'm about to say something about that. But go ahead. <laughs> wait, one is, wait, go ahead. Yeah, I think so. I, do, I will say with the devices, if they're in church and they're worshiping, and especially if they're baptized and you, and you believe they should be taking Lord's Supper, I'm okay with that. But I don't want to see the entire worship service there on their iPad, right? They should be learning to participate. Are they, <laughs> they should be raising their hands with the church. They should be singing, even if they don't know how to articulate the words. And I've heard little kids singing who can't articulate the words, but they're la, la, la and they're like, these are my people, right? Um, if you, uh, one second, if you have them on the phone like this, you're, re you're reinforcing the, uh, the lack of attention. Or if every time they're, they're going to cause a commotion, you shove a cookie in their mouth, you're reinforcing bad habits. And I, I actually think that's going to make it harder on you in the long term. It's best to deal with it, take them out, do what you got to do, and keep practicing. All right, M, you had another idea? Quiz them after question. That's really good for teenagers, I would say. Brother Henry, you had said something. Are you where? <laughs> yes, the John Wayne style. I like it. Yeah, I believe I believe in rigor, especially I, I believe in that for sure. Aaron. Congratulations, by the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's right. They imitate you. That's exactly how God has designed it. That's good. So if you're uh, whispering to people the whole time, um, <clears throat> it's okay once or twice. You know, it's okay to whisper and say something. It is a co corporate thing that we're doing here. Um, but uh, but your kids are watching for sure. Um Yeah. Well, and the people around you here, it's all quiet. <laughs> look at my artwork. I just, look, sometimes you might have to do that because you've tried everything. This is not a legalistic, judgmental thing. Sometimes you're just at the end of your rope and you're going to have to just like live to fight another day. I get it. Okay. I've spanked a kid several times in a row, and I'm like, all right, this ain't working. We're going to live to fight another day. Um, that's fine. That's fine. But just generally, you want to encourage uh, discipline and control and, and not um, give in to the ADD, not dumb down to it. Um, I will say the thing that worked for us the best, more than anything else in the world, is we had family worship. That is key. And they would sit in family worship, and, uh, and we would sing songs, and we would uh, we would pretend like we were in church and uh and we were in a, in a sense we were worshiping god and i would read a book to him we would pray and uh and we would and if and we would discipline them if they acted up and um and they so that they had a a, a constant practice at home and we built up their stamina you know over a period of time so that they could sit for 30 minutes that's really all you have to do is sit for 30 minutes. If you can sit for 30 minutes, you got it. Because most kids don't have a problem standing and singing and, and doing all that. It's the sitting for the, the, the word time. So that would be my, my number one suggestion is to have family worship and have them seated on the couch or, or at the table. And, um, and encourage them and instruct them. And, uh, and don't go so long. Don't exasperate them or provoke them by trying to you know, have them be like a 20 year old, um, but they you know, their frame, their children and, uh, but, and, but also discipline them and, and help them learn how to do it. That would be my biggest tip. Here's some other tips from biblicalblueprints.org. While listening to the sermon, you can be praying, right? You should be praying. You can be praying for people in the room. You can be praying for the, uh, the human who's delivering the sermon. 
You can be praying that God would open up your heart and, and teach you through it, right? Um, you can take notes if, if that helps you. You can take notes if that helps you. You can interact with what God is saying to you. Yes, amen. You know, help me with that. You can interact back and forth with what God is saying to you. Uh, you can read along in the Bible. You can write down action items. You can, and that means regarding what God is saying to you, not your to-do list for work the next day. Um, you can pray for the, the preacher during the sermon. You can look up and uh, attentive to the person who is speaking or singing. Um, you can ignore extraneous distractions. If there's an, a distraction over here or over here, trust me, don't do this, okay? Don't do it. Control yourself. Stay focused. Because when the whole room goes, huh? Now no one's paying attention. Everyone now, now what you've done is you've created a question mark in everyone's mind. There's something going on back there. I don't know what it is. That creates a narrative arc of suspense. And they were now attentive until there is closure and a resolve in knowing what it is. You understand what I mean? You're creating suspense in the room, which no preacher can compete with that level of suspense. That's why the fly is the most, because everyone's watching. And you're, it's like, a, it's like the game-winning shot in the playoffs. It's going through the air. You're like, is it going to land? Is it going to land? It landed. It's too much suspense. It's too much suspense. So you have to say, no, you have to focus and stay focused. I think this is very important. You will get way more out of, out of worship if you can maintain the self-discipline and self-control of attentiveness. Amen. And it is a discipline. All right. Um. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think so too. Let me give you a few Bible passages for you just in case you need this to be reinforced. Um, Joshua 8.35. This is regarding children in worship. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel and the women and the little ones and the sojourners who lived among them. Amen. It's all, they're part of the body of Christ. Um, Joel 2.15, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the, even the nursing infants. That's why this is one of the texts that, I, that convinced me that the nursing infants are members of the congregation, that they're not in a different class of human awaiting their, you know, decision, decision that they make, but that they are born into the assembly the same way you're born into the, a nation or born into a family. They're born into the assembly and have rights and promises as covenant kids and are, responded, are expected to respond to those things in faith. Let the, and look what happens when everyone's gathered in worship. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. You see, you draw near to the Lord in individual worship, but you also draw near to the Lord in corporate worship, and he draws, draws near to you as well. That's what we're doing every Sunday. That's why attending church is non-negotiable. That's why the Lord's Day is non-negotiable, right? We are, um, we are entering into the presence of our King and renewing our corporate vows as his people, right? Um, Stephen and Jennifer are going to be renewing their vows soon in October, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. But they're already married. You understand? I talked to him about this. They're already married. They're going to renew their vows. Now, we're, you're, uh, you're the church. You're married to Christ. Amen. On Sundays, we renew our vows. We remember our commitments and our oaths and our vows. And where we have transgressed, we confess. And there is a sort of a renewal service. That's, that's what I believe is at the heart of worship each week. Um, it's, not a, it's not us. It's not the religious performers providing you an experience. That's the audience-driven church model. That's not, we're not trying to give you a cathartic or emotional experience. We are uh, just guiding you through a, a formal covenant renewal service, much like a wedding renewal. <clears throat> um, Deuteronomy 31, verse 12. 
Assemble the people, men, women, and little ones, and the sojourner within your towns. What's the purpose? That they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, and be careful to do all the words of this law. Amen. So rather than accommodating ADD, we should train it out of us, right? And out of our children. Amen. And it's not going to be easy, and it's going to take a long time. It's an uphill battle. But by the power of the Spirit of God, we don't have to be dominated by our lack of self-control. Amen. All right. Any thoughts or questions on that? we got about four minutes. Okay. Yeah, we're not, it's not a legalistic thing. This is, yeah, it's not a legalistic thing, obviously. And we also have a nursery in case you need it. If you're not, if the kid hasn't yet been ready or trained, and that's okay. Uh, but we also have it for visitors because we want to be patient and gentle with people. Because when people come to our church, we can't like expect them on day one to have known, known all of this stuff. You understand what I mean? They come in day one, and if they say, where's our youth group, please don't pounce on them with, with this message. You got to be patient. And what I say when someone asks, where's your youth group? I say, well, we, our youth group is uh, uh, five days a week. It goes from about 7.45 in the morning to 3. And then sometimes we have sports afterward, right? <laughs> we call it the, the academy. So that's my, and they're like, oh, okay. You, I say it's kind of like a full-time youth ministry, so to speak. But, but, I mean, you have to be patient with people and gentle with them. The same thing with anything, right? Um, all right. Well, I'm going to, we're going to leave our, the sermon for next time then, because Peter's about to open his mouth and preach. We'll save that for next time. All right, y'all have a good Lord's Day.